What it do is the 513 with your boy J.E. on the Cincinnati Podcast. Happy Monday. I hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, look, football season is back. We had a phenomenal weekend of college football. Uh, we still got the Clemson versus Georgia Tech game tonight. And uh, the Bachelor, the Bachelorette is on tonight, too, for my folks who watch The Bachelorette. Uh, not me, myself, but I know my wife will be tuning in. So I will be watching not by choice, but uh, to be with my wife. So. Uh, it's a big night tonight for TV fans all across the world, and it's a big week for Bengals fans, right? We play the Pittsburgh Steelers this week uh, on Sunday, September 11th, and, uh, man, I cannot wait to get down to Paycor Stadium, and I think it's a lot to be excited about. So let's get right into it, right? The Bengals, I believe, are six-and-a-half favorites versus the Steelers this week. Um, the Bengals have swept the Steelers. The Bengals swept the Steelers last year, um, and we won the last three matchups versus the Steelers since 2019, right? So uh, on a three-game win streak versus the Steelers, of course, um, of course, we swept them last year. Everybody knows that. <laughs> uh, it's a good feeling to say that, so I'll, I'll say it as much as I can. And uh, we know both teams essentially made some acquisitions this year, Um had, I don't think the Bengals had really key losses, and the Steelers had some losses, but uh, for the most part, I think the Steelers have kind of bolstered their roster, brought a couple guys back, uh, and then signed some free agents as well, too. Now, their offensive line signings weren't that impressive to me. I don't think the Steelers' offensive line got better much at all. Um, I think they got James Daniels, the guy from, uh, from the Bears. But overall, they did make some acquisitions, right? And um, – when you look at the Steelers roster and you look at what they did this offseason, right, you talk about maybe some key acquisitions, not all the acquisitions, but maybe some key ones. Larry Ogunjobi, former Bengal, we know he's coming off of an injury. Miles Jack, uh, a good linebacker from the Jacksonville Jaguars who really had his worst season last season uh, as a Jaguar, but maybe he can find renewed life. Under um, Brian Flores and the Pittsburgh Steelers, Akilah Witherspoon, the Buffalo CB2. Uh, so he's coming over from Buffalo. I think he had a lot of success getting interceptions, uh, playing alongside Tredavious White, even though we know Trey was hurt last year. Um, and then Mitch Trubisky, right? Mitch Trubisky is a guy who sat on the bench last year for the Bills, and um, people thought that him sitting behind Josh Allen would make him better. Uh, it is yet to be seen. To this point, Mitch Trubisky is labeled a bust in the NFL, right? He's He's been in the league. He's been a part of rosters that went to the playoffs, and uh, he's been quite pedestrian in the playoffs with the Bears, uh, even though he had probably one of the best defensives um, at that time in the NFL. So Mr. Trubisky, I think, was a big acquisition for them. Presumably, uh, he was named a captain today by the Steelers, so I'm assuming that he's going to get the nod for, for week one and be the starter. And uh, I expect him to start probably for most of the season, if not all of the season. And then they got George Pickens, the rookie wide receiver who I think George Pickens is, you know, George Pickens to me is an absolute animal, a dog at receiver. And uh, he plays with that mentality. He has that, you know, he has that fight in him. And when I, when I say fight, he has that ability that, look, no matter what, you know, what the play is, what the route is, if the ball's not coming to him or it is coming to him, he's going to win that rep. Uh, not something that George Pickens possesses, and I think they got a good pick in him. So those were kind of some key acquisitions. I didn't mention the linemen because, look, truly I, I don't think the, the Steelers got better up front uh, with those acquisitions. Uh, I could be missing one or two here as far as their acquisitions, but I think those, to me, were the big uh, acquisitions for the Steelers. And, of course, the Bengals, we know we upgraded our offensive line. Um, and then we got Dax Hill. We, we got a couple other rookies as well, too, that will contribute. So I won't get much into the Bengals offseason acquisitions because I think it's pretty self-explanatory. And if you've been following this channel, you know that uh, you know the acquisitions that we have made, right? You know the acquisitions we made. You know who we've signed, who we haven't signed. And I don't need to tell you about what we got going on from an acquisition standpoint for the Bengals. Uh, I will say today we waive uh, Alan George, one of the guys I was highly impressed with. But 
Um, look, I, I like Allen. I think he's going to be a great cornerback in this league. I, I hope that he clears waivers and makes it to, uh, back to the practice squad. But in reality, look, they're bringing Jesse Bates, activating him onto the roster, and uh, this team is pretty much set as far as depth. I think they have every starter back practicing today. Um, so that's exciting news. Uh, we know some guys are working back off of injury, but that's very exciting news, and I, I think it bowls very well for the Cincinnati Bengals. So, again, the Bengals and the Steelers are set to face off this Sunday uh, for the home opener. And I think if you're the Cincinnati Bengals, you really couldn't ask for a better matchup to open the season, right? You're playing a team that has been the bully of the divisions for uh, God knows how long. Uh, and truthfully, this is a game that you can help set the tone for the season. A lot of media members, a lot of people across the league, when they look at the Steelers, no matter the situation, they tend to hold the Steelers up on the pedestal um, based off the history alone. Now, one thing I didn't, I didn't mention the losses, right? I didn't mention the key losses for teams. And I think the big loss for the Steelers, even though people will say that his arm was dead, <laughs> was Big Ben. Um, I will have you know that a buddy of mine, Game One, has a phenomenal stat that says Big Ben led seven game winning drives last season. Seven. Now, that might seem like uh, it is lost on the world and society that Big Ben was a part of seven game winning drives last season when he was on his way out, but that's a big deal. And quite frankly, I don't know if you're going to get that production from Mitch Trubisky, right? So, you're playing a team that has a quarterback that they really have questions at quarterback and they want to see what they have. They've had decent preseasons, but we know how preseason is. They're playing against backups. They're not playing against the real defenses that they're going to see, and everything's vanilla, right? So you should be able to see a basic coverage, know exactly what it is before the snap, and then execute based on that coverage zone. When you get into the season, teams are going to be bluffing a lot. Teams are going to be showing different uh, pressures, unique pressures, blitzing, doing a lot of different things to confuse a quarterback. And I think that's, you know, that's that's kind of what you'll see going into this game. So when you look at the Bengals versus Steelers matchup, right, to me, there's a couple keys to victory. Um, in fact, I think there's there could be a lot of keys to victory, but we'll, we'll narrow it down to three, right? Number one, stop the run and win on first and second downs, right? I expect the Steelers – to sprinkle in a few play action shot plays early uh, and every now and then throughout the game. I expect them to do that. But let's not get confused, right? The Steelers are going to want to establish the run with Najee Harris. Um, they're going to want to run the ball early and often to stay ahead of the sticks um, or ahead of the chains, as like people like to say. And um, they want to make sure to put – as less pressure or I guess the least pressure on Mitch Trubisky as possible. So look for them on first and second downs to try to get the get the really stay ahead of the sticks and get it to third and manageable manageable or pick up, you know, three or four on first down, three or four on second down. And then hey, you have an option to pass or run on third down. So they'll be moving the pocket um and uh they'll be trying to get Najee going. Najee Harris, to me, this year for the Steelers will be their offense. He will be the focal point of their offense, and everything, to me, will run off of Najee Harris. So if you drafted him in fantasy, <laughs> you're probably, you'll probably get a lot of volume of production out of him. But if you're the, the Bengals on Sunday, you got to stop Najee. Everything stops with Najee. You stop Najee, put them in passing situations. We know their offensive line is not good. Trey Hendrickson is going to feast, right? So that that's my uh, key to victory. Number one, stop the run, one on first and second downs. Number two, on offense, establish the run and communicate up front versus unique pressures. Last year, the Steelers against the Bengals struggled to get Joe Burrow on the ground. Um, so they're going to be bringing a lot of unique pressures on Sunday. Right. They're going to do everything they can to essentially, in my opinion, confuse Joe Burrow, to confuse the offensive line, to try to get Joe on the ground and try to get him flustered. Uh, so, uh, in my opinion, establish the run, get Joe Mixon going early. We know that the Steelers' interior defensive line isn't as stout. Um, they had a guy retire on him that was a, a critical piece to their team. 
And uh, ultimately, if the Bengals can dominate in the trenches on offense, this game likely will not be close at all. I'm talking plus 14 uh, on the on the on the win. So look at that. Now, number three is if you do win first and second downs, obviously the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to have to pass. Mitch is going to have to drop back and make a read. That said, on third downs and on any passing downs, really, even second and long, pressure and dis- send unique pressures and disguises against Mitch Trubisky. Get him rattled early. Uh, get him off his mark. Make him second guess everything that he's doing and make them realize that, hey, I'm still Mr. Trubisky no matter what happens. <laughs> so there's no secret that Mitch has struggled in the NFL with consistency uh, with the Bears. And uh, I think he's got maybe he's found a newer system for him that might put him in success. But at the end of the day, Mitch Trubisky is Mitch Trubisky is Mitch Trubisky. We know who he is. Send unique pressures. Make him make bad decisions. Make him hold on to the ball long and get him on the ground. Get him rattled. That's going to be the key to the, the game for me. Those three keys to victory, um, exciting times coming up here at Paycor Stadium. I'm expecting to be there in the stadium, so hope to see a lot of you there. And uh, ultimately, I expect the Bengals to win this game. Uh, six and a half favorites right now. I don't know what the line will move to uh, as we get closer to the game, but I expect it to stay around six and a half, but I expect the Bengals to win by seven or more this game. So, who day to everybody checking in and uh, – See you next week.